Most Chicago Bears fans are still reeling from the loss to the Washington Commanders, and uh, we're going to let some people sound off on that, but I'm going to talk about why Matt Eberflus has so- shown a concerning trend that I do think could point towards his exit if he doesn't turn it around and finish this season extremely strong for the Chicago Bears. We're going to talk about all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm the host, Terry Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the uh, channel at Shy Bears Central and every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this content for today. And I want to start right off at the top and talking about a little bit of what we talked about yesterday. We went over the winners and losers, the studs, the duds, whatever you want to call it, from the game. And a big part of that was the coaching staff as far as being a negative for the team. And when you look at kind of the reactions and where things have set since in the, in the over 24 hours since the game now, you know, you've had a lot of players kind of come out and publicly question the play call. Jalen Johnson being one of that, Montez Sweat being one of them. Even a video came out when you see Caleb Williams' reaction on the sideline where – he read what was going to happen and actually seemed like Kayla Williams actually realized, hey, yeah, we could be in trouble on this Hail Mary play, which is a good thing you want to see from Caleb as far as that recognition when it comes down to it. But when you look at it, man, Jalen said this. It was rough situation when it didn't have to be. I feel like we definitely could have sh- slowed down just looking at it. I feel like we could have possibly took a timeout or something to get everybody situated, figure out who we we're going to box out, kind of get everybody calmed down and get ready for the last play. Of course, that didn't happen, but at the end of the day, we knew our responsibilities. They, that definitely is something that goes without being said. We knew our responsibility, but it was a lot harder when you're trying to figure things out on the go versus practice. It isn't a controlled setting. So, Jalen Johnson, you know, uh, you know, airing that out. But there's a concerning trend when it comes down to it, and that is Matt Eberflus' decision-making, right? You look at the fact that through the first three games of this season, Right, we were all saying that it was pretty much the same. The de- the defense played extremely hard, um, it, and, and those type of things. But the offense showed it. Now the offense slowed things down. But then you look over the next three games, and then the Chicago Bears played much better against the weaker competition, and it kind of inflated things. Right now, I still think this Bears defense is extremely legit. You look at what this team has done over the last three weeks: um, nineteen points, twenty-one points, eighteen points. Right. All on the road. That's what the Bears have given up in our losses. So the Bears defense still puts the team in a position to have winnable games, which is something that has been outstanding. This defense is legit. You look at holding Jaden Daniels to five straight possessions or, or, or yeah, possessions with no scoring, right? The Bears defense, again, outside of that Hail Mary, took care of a lot of its business. But then when you start looking at some of the trends with Matt Eberflus, when you look at Matt Eberflus and some of the games that we've lost in fourth quarters, Dating back to 2023, we had a game against Denver in 2023 where we had a 98.1% win probability. Against Detroit in that same year, 98.2. Against Cleveland that same year, 91. And then you look at the game against Washington, a 96.4 win probability, and those are all games that we lost. And when you change so much, right, you've changed the offensive coordinator, you've changed the quarterback, it all comes back to this is a Matt Eberflus problem. And then when you pair that with what we saw on the other side against the Commanders, you had a a coach in Dan Quinn who was a finalist with Matt Eberflus for the Bears head coaching uh, position, and then another offensive coordinator in Cleve Kingsbury who we did interview for offensive coordinator position before deciding to go on Shane Walter. When you look at the realization and everything that's coming together, it just it gets to this point: Matt Eberflus, while he's he's rallied the defense, he's improved the defense. He stopped the slide that the Bears' defense was on for years before he came here, and we have a damn good defense. But when you are a head coach, you are judged by a different standard. The decision, Matt Eberflus had the headset on. He was part of the decision to give the ball to Doug Kramer at the goal line. That was a missed opportunity. That was a mistake. You got somebody like Roshan and him, and that pairing with him and Doug Kramer has worked so well, you got too fucking cute, right? And so 
the rest of the season is going to be a big, big part right now to show how much Matt Eberflus can stop this trend. The Bears falling to four and three. While it doesn't seem like that may be too bad, we're still above 500. We have the most difficult uh, schedule down the stretch and the most difficult road to making the playoffs. And it could very well be that this loss against the Washington Commanders could be what keeps the team out of the playoffs. We'll see. Yes, we got a game against the Arizona Cardinals, which should be easier, right? I'm not saying that it's your, but then we have the NFC North, San Francisco, right? There is nothing that guarantees that this Bears team could finish above 500 to finish the season. And if we don't, when you consider how talented this roster is, while still have some shortcomings, um, this could very well, if the Bears miss the playoffs this, this year, right? This could very well seal the fate of Matt Eberflus because this Bears team, I, it's no longer in the place of just rebuilding. We are not rebuilding anymore. We're still building, but we have way too talented of a roster. We are trying to win football games. That's what this is about. And with Matt Eberflus showing an inability to close close games, you got to ask yourself, how does the front office feel like that reflects for a team that's now goal is making the playoffs, right? And if that happens, right, if that is truly this goal of this team and they look and this franchise looks at it and says, we're no longer judging by just development. How many wins can we get while we have young pieces that are developing? That's the key part of this. If that's where this goes and how this front office views this, it's going to be bad, right, for Matt Eberflus. This was already a coach that took three days of deliberation from your front office to decide if you were even going to keep your job, right? That shows how dour this situation is for Matt Eberflus and how important it is for Matt Eberflus to get his shit together as a head coach. Now, player execution is one thing, right? That's, a, that's one thing. And you got to look at that because Tyreek Stevenson and what happened there is definitely something that you got to look at. Like Tyreek Stevenson, it's just a bad, it's bad optics. It's terrible optics, right? And you, and you got to and you got to see how he's going to grow and and respond to that as well. But like Matt Eberflus has so much that he that that now is on him as a head coach. And while this stretch after the when when after week eleven when the division games start, when this stretch is not only important for the Bears and what it means for their playoff hopes, it's important maybe for the future of Matt Eberflus. It's important for that if Matt Eberflus wants to stay on for this team and that maybe I mean. I'm sure he wants to stay on for his job, but the Bears have to make the best decision for this franchise. And Matt Eberflus may or may not be that decision. More signs point to may not, right? And that's something that Ryan Poles, Kevin Warren, Ian Cunningham, everybody's going to have to ask themselves as this season goes on, is what is going to be next for this team? What is all needed to get this team to the, to the next step that's, that's needed for us to be able to be a winning football program. We have talent here. I'm not going to be somebody who acts like the Chicago Bears don't have talent on both sides of the ball. We absolutely do. Now, the coaching issues, both from Shane Waldron and from Matt Eberflus, those may get louder as this season goes on and as we head towards the finish of this season. And, you know, that's a huge question. The Bears' biggest need right now you got to ask yourself, how are the Bears going to address their weaknesses if they're going to do anything at the trade deadline? And that doesn't mean the Bears giving up their first round pick or anything like that. We've seen it before. This team, uh, you know, uh, Ryan Poles likes to use his day three picks, things like that, to try to make acquisitions. But the Bears have some glaring weaknesses, and coaching is one of those. Outside of that, center. Outside of that, offensive tackle depth, which we'll get into here in a second. Um, you know, we got some things that we need to look at for this team overall. And so, We'll see what the Bears do. We'll see how they end up addressing it. But Matt Eberflus, and not to say that his seat is hot, right? I don't want to. I don't want to overcorrect one way, but the seat is heating up, and it could be absolutely blazing and on fire at, at, in the stretch that we have after Week Eleven. That is going to be the stretch that dictates how the Bears do. Because yes, while this loss to the Washington Commanders sucks, and while the the four games that I went over that the Bears had a high win probability in the fourth quarter that we end up turning around and losing those games, those speak loudly as well. But you know what would also speak loudly? If Matt Eberflus comes out of this, what if he goes four and two in his division, right? What if he does that? What if by some um, 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 crazy circumstances, we go five and one in our division, right? What if that happens? And there's still a chance for that. This Bears defense is legit and they're going to keep the Bears in game. 
There's no question about that. But the question that you have to ask yourself is now, how strong does the finish need to be for Matt Eberflus for a seat not to be hot at the end of the season? And I just don't know if I feel confident enough that we're going to get there to do that. And I want to hear from you guys on this as well, right? When you see this team and you see the struggles and you see this schedule that we have upcoming, what happens with the Chicago? How, what record do you feel Matt Eberflus has to finish with to where the Bears focus on other things rather than the head coaching position this offseason? How do, you, how do you view that? I'd say this. If the Bears can still, with four wins so far, if, if they can still finish around 11 wins, if somehow whatever combination happens, then I think at that point in time you let Matt Eberflus finish out the last year of his contract unless somebody's just on the market you feel won't be there in the following year. I think that that could be a possibility. That's a tall test for Matt Eberflus, though. I want to be clear here. That's an extremely tall test. You look at where we got seven games in the, in the bank with 10 more left. That means the Bears would have to go 7-3 and three over the remaining part of the season to finish with 11 games. If they do that, I can look at that and say, all right, I can understand if the Bears want to focus on improving the offensive line, getting some other improvements, some depth here on the defensive line, whatever they need to do, and then we roll it out in the last year, Matt Eberflus, and it's all on the line for you then, my boy. Um, but anything short than that, I think that the Bears absolutely will have to go into it like, and, and, and evaluate some things. That's my personal opinion. I don't expect everybody to agree with it, but you guys can let me know how you feel on that down below as always. Let's get into the next topic. Braxton Jones has avoided a major injury. It seems like he may miss a week or two, but it's not considered a major injury. He is listed as week to week. So we'll see what happens there. Now, Kieran Amagaje, the rookie, stepped in uh, for Jones and he played 45 offensive snaps. 71% of the team's offensive plays Kieran Amagaje was out there for. And while the initial return on Karen Amagaje's performance wasn't the best, right? It wasn't terrible either, but it wasn't the best. And so it left a lot to be desired. Now, Braxton Jones is a guy that depending on what, which Bears fan you ask, you can get anything from an answer between this guy is talented, people are too hard on him, or you can get that he's overrated. I have been very clear on my thought process on Braxton Jones. I think that he is a solid player, but he hasn't really improved any in his time in the NFL. He's basically the same guy that he was when the Bears drafted him, which is solid. And I do think he can be a, a very good debt piece for the Chicago Bears. But at the end of the day, Braxton Jones is a guy who has been solid enough, right? And now that puts a position where between Tevin Jenkins' injury concerns, between Braxton Jones, yes, you got Karen Amagata, you got Ryan Bates coming back soon, you got Matt Pryor, Bill Murray also went down in the game, but doesn't seem like anything's too uh, concerning there. We'll see right as the injury reports come out. Does this now force the hand of Ryan Poles to go out there and make an acquisition on the offensive line of some of the guys that we've heard are out there available on the offensive line for day three picks? That's the key thing in here, right? I'm not saying go after the big names that can take day three picks in this, right? And you got to ask yourself, is it worth it? And it, it, it really would tell a lot about how Ryan Poles still views the Bears' chances to finish this season strong if he gives up that type of future asset to bring in some offensive linemen or a key offensive lineman to this. Now, of course, with Ryan Bates getting back, you have some hope in what he's going to be able to bring to this Bears team. Absolutely right, as you should. I like that for this Bears team, but you still got question marks all up and down this team. And so as the competition is getting better, and while the offensive line was in the midst before this commander's game of three straight weeks of improving week after week, we now see that with a solid defensive line, maybe a little bit of that was fool's gold, right? That's what you got to ask yourself. How much of over that three-game streak, that three-game winning stretch that the Bears had, how much of that was fool's goal because of the competition that you were playing against? And the decision that Ryan Poles comes out of that making could determine what he does at this trade deadline. The trade deadline's quickly approaching. And I have no doubts that Ryan Poles is on the phone to see what's out there as far as deals. Doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to make a deal, but it does. I do think he's going to be on those phones to see what he can get. But ultimately, it just comes down to this, right? Ryan Poles has shown throughout his history and his time here with the Chicago Bears that he's not adverse to bringing in talent at the trade deadline that can help this team. And even in times where we didn't necessarily have the outlook to be pushing for the playoffs, this is a team that has a playoff caliber defense. How much of this offense do you think can be salvaged with Shane Waldron's play calling, with getting better offensive linemen, with getting Caleb Williams more time, which when Caleb Williams has time, he's still good, people. I get it in how the game, especially the 
the the matchup between him and Jaden Daniels, how that disappointed Bears fans, and how some people look at that and say, what does this mean for Caleb Williams' overall rookie season? But I think when you look at it, Ryan Poles is going to do what he feels is best for this team, for the present and for the future. That's what it is. And this injury to, to Braxton Jones, Tevin Jenkins being di- dinged up, the overall performance being up and down, if Ryan Poles can make a move that can stabilize the performance of this offensive line to finish this season out strong, I think that he should do it. But you guys let me know what you guys think on that down below. Now, with that said, i got two voicemails I want to get into today. The first one, this one's from Dre. What's up, man? It's Dre calling out of Minnesota. Man, I'm just sick about that game yesterday. And it ain't even a Hail Mary pass because I feel like we shouldn't even be in that position. We at the one-yard line, and you give an offensive lineman the handle. When all season long you've been putting this man, this man, first of all, this man is a blocker. This man is a blocker. He ain't accustomed to having the football in his hands. And in a key moment in this game, you hand it off to him, a offensive center, a offensive lineman. Please, are you kidding me? Get your soft ass out of here, Shane Waldron. That's some soft ass shit. Pound the freaking football up the middle, win the fucking game. I'm so sick about that game yesterday, and I'm so sick of this coaching style. And then the Hail Mary, how don't you have, oh, my goodness. I don't even know what to say about the fucking Hail Mary. That shit was ridiculous. But that's bare football for you. Bear down. Get it out, right? The venting session. That's what the mailbag is here for a little bit in a way as well, is the venting session to give our fans, well, Bears fans, we don't have fans, we got family. Uh, well, Bears fans, the opportunity to vent. And you're right. The Kramer handoff was a, was a, was a, a head-scratching decision. It made no sense. I, and, and that's a offensive coordinator getting too cute. That just is what that is to me. Shane Waldron got too cute. He thought he was getting too, he thought he was so ahead of what the defense could expect or whatever that he got cute when, honestly, just gr- p- ground and pound was the perfect uh, decision to make there. Having Dale Kramer be able to clear that hole, right? To get uh, so that Braxton Jones go in there and try to knock over some offensive linemen and um, Roshan Johnson, I say Roshan Johnson should have the opportunity to get over there and knock over some offensive linemen and get in the end zone. That's what we should have done. We got too fucking cute, and Shane Waldron has to live with that decision. Matt Eberflus has to live with that decision. Now you got to go out there and be better, make better decisions on the goal line. You made bad decisions, and while you still were able to get it back on the next drive, right? I think it's too overlooked the fact that the Bears drive, if the defense didn't do what the defense did in the following drive to give the Bears offense another opportunity at the ball, the game could have ended there for the Bears, right? And so, yeah, you got to be better in your decision making. You can't be too cute. You can't think too much. You do want to think. You do want to strategize. You want to do those things. But don't think too much to where you make a dumbass decision. And that was a dumbass decision, Dre. I agree with you. Thank you for calling in. Thank you for venting. Let's get into the next one. This one's from my boy, K2. Yo, what up, fellas, man? It's your boy, K2, man. And I'm not going to even lie to y'all right now, bro. I'm a set to the fullest. I'm going to just keep it a buck, bro. Like, I hate to sound so negative about about my team, man, but I'm about to, I'm about to let them bitch-ass niggas have it, bro. I am so sick of coaching errors. When are we going to start playing the game mentally strong, bro? All we do is make fucking mental errors. All the fucking time, bro. We were one second away from being five and two, bro. But now we got to sit here with this sour taste in our mouth and the fact that this this Jaden Daniels motherfucker. Is, it, it, listen, bro. Hey, I'm sorry, bro, but like I feel like Caleb Williams just lost all his credibility for rookie of the year, bro. In one game, in one game off one pass, bro. After our defense stuffed Jaden Daniels for five straight drives and we had nothing to show for it, bro. That is coaching. I'm sorry, bro. I'm so sick of these stupid ass coaching errors, bro. Like Stevenson at this point, bro. If he ain't, if he ain't, if if nothing happens with the stupid ass antics that he did, I'm never gonna take this team serious ever again, bro. Because I'm so sick of little stupid coaching errors, bro. That cost us games, bro. We supposed to be five and two, but here we are four and three. And I hate to say it, bro, but 
every game from now on only going to get tougher. I don't give a fuck now. I feel like Arizona going to beat us. I feel like the Patriots going to beat us now, bro. Like, I have no more confidence in what we do because mentally we don't play the game tough enough, bro. It's like it's been there for so fucking long, bro. Like, I'm at the point where I really want to give up because what's the point, bro? Like, now I got all these motherfuckers in my inbox all on my social media talking all this bullshit, bro, off of one lucky-ass pass, bro. Off one lucky-ass pass, bro. Our defense is Super Bowl capable, bro. Super Bowl fucking capable, bro. And we can't even score fucking – we can't even score three touchdowns. That's not a fucking good team on the other side, bro, that we faced yesterday. They're not a good team. And we couldn't even score three fucking touchdowns, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Even Flus to me, if he don't get if he don't get designated, if he don't get designated to, to uh, uh, a defensive coach, I don't believe he I don't believe he what we need no more, bro. I'm at that point, bro. I don't believe he what we need at the helm, bro. We need Bill Belichick. We need somebody that understand how to lead a fucking team, bro. And I'm sorry. All the cussing I'm doing, bro. And you ain't got to play this voice, man. I just thought I'd just express my, my rant to y'all, man. But I hope y'all have a good week, man. And you know what? For the last time, bear it out. First of all, K2 definitely will be my barber when I move back to Chicago. But listen, coaching errors, I agree with you. We want to get to a point where the coaching is not is not the problem. I would much rather talk about what a player can do to refine his game and not make same mistakes than fucking coaching errors. It sucks. It sucks to see coaching be the thing that holds your team back at times now make no mistake about it Caleb Williams performance over most of that game until that fourth quarter also held the Chicago Bears back there's no excuse for that right but you have to look at the coaching things and how that is really hurting this team in so many instances now as far as Caleb losing his chances at rookie of the year there's still a lot of season left to play there's still 10 games left to play right and so 10 games is more than enough if Caleb Williams really shines to be in that rookie of the year conversation. But Jaden Daniels is the leader of the pack of that right now, and rightfully so, not to take anything away from Jaden. He is the leader of the pack of that right now. And so how much can Caleb, I've said it before, the thing that I was looking at for Caleb Williams this game, this season, is how much of his mistakes does he learn from and how quickly does he learn from him within this rookie season. Yes, he's going to learn a lot between his rookie season and the second year. But within this season, how much does he learn and grow through? That's the question that I have here, right? Now, as far as the next Bears head coach and being somebody that can lead this team, I think absolutely. You were looking for something different when you didn't have so many answers now that the Bears have on their roster. They have a lot of that. The defense is basically set. The secondary is amazing. The defensive line probably needs another piece or a, one of those young guys to make the Javon Dexter leap next season. And we're there, right? The offense, we need better execution and we do need better leadership as far as somebody who's going to to polarize this team and get it all together. That's what we need. And so if Matt Eberflus, if the Bears make the decision at the end of the season that Matt Eberflus is not that guy, you go out and you get that guy. Just as aggressive as you are in the draft and moving up and getting Romo Dunze, you need to be as aggressive at getting the guy that you feel can get this team where it needs to go from the head coaching situation. And we'll see. Like I said earlier, if we finish at 11 wins, I'm cool with you giving it another year focusing on the offensive line, focusing on other things. But if this team struggles to finish this season, to me, you got to move on. It's time. It's time to cut bait. You got to move on. Matt Eberflus isn't going to magically change in one season. He's, he's, he's adapted. He's grown. But the talent has grown, right? So how much of that is actually Matt Eberflus and how much is it? We just got better talent. And you should win more games with better talent, right? That's the question that Ryan Poles and this team has to ask themselves. It's going to be an interesting storyline to watch how the season ends and then how that informs into what we do in this offseason. But K2, thank you for leaving that voicemail. Make sure you guys are following the show at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, chicagobearcentral at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related, but that's thanks to you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, Chi Town up, with Bear Down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break Media.